my question is, and this is something that I, I just saw you do up here, and as you say that we need to read the Bible before the science, and then I, and so with the flood example, you said, you know, we want to read the text, and then we can look at the science and see that there wasn't a global flood. So I guess, how do you weigh that, that approach where you read the Bible for what it is, and I, I guess the Bible can give us like a range of potential interpretations, and then we can use science to like clip back some of those? How, how, how do you well, see look, that? Well, look, I would just working? say that, that I think the right answer is to understand there's mystery. And like that part of like the flourishing of humans, part of God's good creation is that, that it's, you know, you know, God creates things and it's, what is it, like the pleasure of kings to seek it out or the, the challenge of kings to seek it out. That's part of like dominion is to, to kind of engage that mystery with curiosity. I just don't think that you get modern medicine out of the Bible. I don't think you get particle physics. I don't think you get Shakespeare. I don't think you get, you know, computers out of the Bible. But it's not that God doesn't care about that. It's just kind of, you know, that's just wasn't important for us him to share to us in Scripture. And we get to go figure it out. Now, I think what's really important to do is understand exactly what the Bible is teaching and to hold on to that and to be very, very cautious of not adding to it with our interpretations and treating our interpretations as equal to God's word. Like, man's word is not the same as God's word. That's why I say go back to that. And, you know, if you notice when I talked about that, I didn't start with, you know, the evidence <laughs> against the flood. I said, like, what is it actually saying? And even when you don't look at, you know, neighboring cultures and all that, and most of these things, you see a great deal of ambiguity in the text. A great deal of ambiguity, and you know, and, and it's reflected in the wide range of opinions that Christians in history have had, and the fact that they didn't codify any of this stuff in the historical creeds. And I mean, a great example. Well, actually, I'm not going to go there, but you know, you see those disagreements, for example, even on whether or not uh, Adam was a real person at this time. And, it, and if I understand right, Philo isn't being kicked out of Judaism because he's wondering about that. He's just kind of like one of the other people there, because that's actually not the core of the message. Um, what we get in Scripture is that the Bible is going to be infallible in its ability to give us, bring us to right understanding of Jesus. That's the important thing. That He's the important one that's very clear. It even says this in Hebrews. It says that, you know, the prophets come in the past, you didn't understand them. You know, when, when he's even talking about the, the prophets, he's talking about the Old Testament. He's saying that stuff is really hard to understand. <laughs> but then you've seen Jesus, the exact representation of his being. To paraphrase, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. So, yeah, I'm not saying that God isn't there in the Old Testament. He absolutely is. But it's also a strange doctrine to disagree with Hebrews and say that it's easy to interpret the Old Testament. I mean, that, that, I mean I just can't, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just too orthodox for that. I can't, go, I can't innovate that much. When I look at Scripture, I just see, Jesus, see God clearly in Jesus. And I do see God in the Old Testament, but not nearly as clearly as I do in Jesus.